Hello everyone, welcome to Mid Game Madness. I'm your host, Michael Chen. In this new series, we will be looking at the middle of the game. Um, and each episode, I will gonna look at one game um, that can illustrate some of the uh, finer points of how to navigate the middle game. Uh, before we get started, I prepared a small slide. Um, so let's take a look. Aha. Mid game madness. So why do we study the middle, the mid game? Um, as we all know, the um, our teachers first part teaches us that the game of Go contains three parts: the opening, the mid game, and the end game. Now, the first thing I'm going to tell you guys is uh, the middle game extends to the opening and the end game. Um, by that, I mean um, you can play the opening and the end game exactly the same way that you play the middle game. Um, and that's why middle game is so much fun. Uh, so uh, the middle of the game is when most Go players including myself and the professional players, really get lost. And uh, sometimes they really are able to find their way, and sometimes they don't. Um, and so um, the middle game is sort of like navigating the ocean or flying through the sky, like this, uh, this eagle you see right, on, right on above my head, right, right, right there. Um, so each, uh, each game is unique, and um, there's, no set, there's no set answer to most uh, situations. And that is why everyone needs to find their own way. Um, and the middle game can also be seen as a maze. Um, it's a very complicated maze, and there's not one pass uh, straight through. And so as a result, no one knows everything. And no one can know everything. And that's why Go is so much fun to people. OK, so my recommendations for the middle game. Do not be afraid to make mistakes, uh, because it's virtually impossible not to make mistakes. Uh, in fact, it's almost very difficult to play the best move more than half of the time. You guys know this better than I do. Anyway, um, second, uh, set many flexible goals so you can achieve more than one goal at a time. Um, this is important because in the middle game, it can become some sort of uh, juggling act. You have many different priorities, many different groups, many different uh, value, many different places to keep track of. And that's why you have to set um, more than one goal, many, many different things that you want to do. So, uh, so the game becomes more interesting, and uh, you can accomplish more than just one thing. Um, the logical follow through to that is you can't, uh, you can't expect to achieve all of your goals. That would be too greedy. Um, no one gets everything that they want. And here's the most important um, suggestion. Uh, learn the principles. Don't be a memorizer. Uh, many of us um, uh, memorize somewhat, um, you know, Jusakis, uh common shapes, um, values of such and such moves. Um, like this move is worth two points. That move is worth five points. Um, so we all memorize some of uh, some things, but we all know someone who is what I call a memorizer. And that's the person who says, I know this. My teacher taught me that I should not go here. Uh, or something, or someone that says, you shouldn't play here because my teacher said that the techie doesn't follow like this. This is not one of the things that I was taught. Mm. 
Anyway, don't be a memorizer. When you play a memorizer, congratulations because you're most likely to win against them. Mm -hmm. um, and the last point, a memorizer of complex and modern AI geosakis usually exposes his true self in the middle game and becomes punished. And that's why um, you may have heard uh, Ryan, our other teacher, say that when you run into someone who plays only the most modern, most AI openings, you tend to feel pretty comfortable because it you know, sort of shows that this guy doesn't really think that much. Um, and you should be happy. Anyway, these are the reasons um, that we study the middle game. Um, and uh, let's take a look at episode one. Episode one. Uh, today, we we're going to look at an interesting game. It's a clash of two very contrasting styles. Uh, this game is between two uh, seven down players on the Fox Go server. Um, sort of like six down on AGS, uh, six, seven down on AGA. Um, so pretty strong players. Um, and we're going to be taking a look at this game through the lens of the middle game. And we're going to compare it, this uh, middle game to, um, uh, to various sports. Uh, in particular, today I want to show that the middle game contains two basic skill ingredients, and that is muscle and skill. Now, what I mean by muscle in Go is the reading ability, the judging ability, and the evaluation ability, sort of like the, um, you know, the hard assets that you have. The ability to read, the ability to calculate how much, uh, how many points, whatever move is worth, and then skill. Skill is a very amorphous sort of not solid thing. Uh, skill is strategy. It's uh, knowing what to do with your strengths, knowing where to calculate, um, what to consider, uh, and how to proceed. So today you're going to see that one of the players is going to seem to have uh, much stronger muscles. He's going to have a lot of strength. And you can see that by him capturing a lot of stones. But he doesn't have a lot of skill because he tunnel visions on stone capture. Um, OK, let's uh, take a look at this game. Now, this, this whole uh, series is based on the middle game, so we're going to go very, very quickly see the opening. Um, you know, pretty normal openings, pretty normal, pretty normal, pretty normal. In fact, we're going to skip right through some of uh, most of these moves uh, in the opening and jump straight into one of the key decision points that I will illustrate. As you can see, the lower left corner is another Joseki. All seems pretty reasonable. All seems pretty reasonable. And uh, I checked with the AI. Right now, the game is uh, basically about even. It looks pretty good for white. Um, as you can see, black has very solid territory at uh, the corners here and here. It seems like white has a much bigger space. Like this seems like a large space. This corner seems big, um, you know, but white is not very solid. Uh, and now you will really get to see um, what really defines this um, black style. Now, uh, the normal move here uh, is to bend up top. And next, white can play a series of different moves. White can play here. White can play something like this. White can expand the bottom, something like this. White can attack the black corner, uh, the black stone in the white corner, something like here. Um, or white can, you know, play something on the right side. All of these are pretty fine moves. Um, 
So this is a this is a normal normal continuation, but black chooses the more aggressive continuation, um, this press. Now this is a common shape, and um, what will end up happening is that black will end up capturing these two white stones. Here, 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 and then white place here. Now, uh, this is the beginning of what I uh, I will describe as a feeding frenzy. So black is going to, from now on, continue to go after white stones and try to capture more and more white pieces. Black extends, and now there's now white has two choices. He can either play uh, this jump here, which will end up uh, saving the two white stones and lead to a continuation something like this, um, where white will end up living on the right side, uh, but black has um, a pretty strong uh, shape in the middle, and uh, next black can continue to play on the left side, uh, you know, destroy territory, and so on. Now, in the actual game, white played this jump. Now, this is um, could be a misread, and, but it could also be his strategy. Uh, we don't know. Uh, anyway, uh, as you can see in the game, uh, black is able to capture more white stones. Cut, Atari. Uh, now, if white wants to save uh, the three white stones at this point, it is too late. White has to connect, and black can turn. And this way, the uh, five white stones are probably going to lose uh, their life. Uh, very sad. Uh, so, white plays on the outside, um, and now black has two choices. He can just ca simply capture, uh, in which case white will probably play something like this, and uh, this result you can see from the uh, black cut earlier here. Um, Black has continued to capture more and more pieces. And um, as a result, Black captured a grand total of six white stones. And he has made territory on the corner. This looks very large. It looks gigantic. Um, but um, the AI and I prefer white in this case. Um, now, uh, whatever the AI says is correct, uh, but we don't really know why the AI is correct. So that's why you have uh, teachers like me. <laughs> so uh, the reason why is, uh, first, uh, this white um, thickness in the middle is, is very strong. If black wants to do anything, white can you know, ensure that he has a very, very, very strong shape. Um, if black wants to play something else, white can push uh, at the three and then connect. Um, either case, white is extremely strong here. Now, because white is very strong right here in the middle, these two black stones on the left side has lost a lot of their, their livelihood uh, because um, before, if black wants to run out, um, he can run out. But right now, if black wants to run out, he's going to run right smack into this white wall in the middle. And... Um, it's just not good. Um, even if black lives, he will end up um, only surrounding whatever points he makes by living, which is probably two points, um, which which uh, which is just sad. So um, after white plays here, the left side can be considered white's territory here, and then uh, this black stone here is also very weak. So after white plays here. Despite black having gained so many territory, 10, 20, 30, almost 40 points in this corner, um, white has so, um, indirectly solidified the left side and strengthened the bottom side. And so um, the total analysis um, shows that white has gained a lot in this exchange. And that's because um, when you have um, uh, a territory that has a lot of agi, um, 
if you have um, if you build a very big wall near the uh, territory, the territory becomes solid. So the value of this uh, white thickness in the middle is 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 tremendously good. Now suppose white had a very solid territory, just like uh, black has, you know, very solid, very solid. Suppose white's territory is also very solid then the value of the uh, thickness on the outside um, isn't as uh, reflective in that sense. Uh, so in the game, Black had the sense to push out. So um, this is a bent three shape. It's a very inefficient shape, but um, our analysis has shown that um, you know, it's very important to um, to go out into the middle here. So white continues to press on the right side, and then white uh, places fix. The AI suggests something uh, something more in the middle, something like that, something like this. Um, again, um, I think. Um, the uh, teacher AI is thinking something along the lines of what we just discussed. Uh, the more pressure you put into the black middle, the less pressure um, you have as white um, on your left side territory. So um, if you have a weak territory, territory that is uh, yours, but it's not completely yours, uh, then if you can you know, grab hold of your opponent, somewhere else, then he has no time to um, exploit your weaknesses. And as a result, your territory becomes very strong. So um, so this is, this is some of the uh, uh, beautiful nature of middle game. Now, in the game, uh, white played this fix. Uh, that's also very important because uh, if white does not, black can cut. Um, and white will probably give up one stone to play something like this. Um, this would dis destroy a lot of white's territory. Um, and uh, if white doesn't want that, it wants to play something stronger, uh, save that white stone, then white's shape has a lot of weaknesses here. For example, black can cut. Um, you know, uh, the three. Uh, white stones are in a lot of danger. Anyway, um, so white fixes, and uh, so uh, from the time that black went on this feeding frenzy, black has captured these six white stones. He has made a few extra points on the right side, um, um, and white has uh, gotten this incomplete but pretty strong wall on the left side. Uh, even though white did not uh, successfully enclose black, um, I, white gained um, a little bit. Um, so let's continue. Now this turn is absolutely uh, important because um, White has potential territory everywhere on the board. White has potential territory here, potential territory here, potential here. Um, if white gets manages to, uh, you know, grab hold of black in the middle, he can uh, say black makes an extension at the bottom. Uh, if white grabs hold of black in the middle, play something like this. Um, very quickly, you can see that white is going to end up um, something like this. The more white uh, moves are made in the middle, the more the left side becomes solid territory. So that's why um, it was so important for black to come out into the middle and not get hemmed in. But this move also shows um, one of the downsides to black capturing the territory earlier on. Uh, because one, this move is so important, but again, this move doesn't surround any territory for black. So 
that's a sacrifice you sometimes have to make um, when you play um, very solidly and capture a lot of solid territory. Um, you end up having to um, uh, forego your potential territory and your next few moves are gonna not be able to surround much territory. But more fun is coming up ahead. Now, so white answered here. Uh, what, again, this game in this game, black has very solid territory. White has uh, very um, amorphous, uh, very uncertain territory and a lot of potential. Um, so uh, white's biggest potential is on the left side, and uh, black goes right after it. Now this is uh, now here is uh, in an interesting point where um, watch how white plays. Uh, let's just uh, enjoy. White presses. Now black continues to make uh, his group um, uh, secure a base for his group. He attaches very good. Um, as you can see, black's moves are all very aggressive. Um, when black had the advantage on the top right corner, he went after white stones, went on this feeding frenzy, captured many, many stones. Now, on the left side, where black is weaker, he also attaches and he's making himself a pretty nice looking uh, base um, where he can destroy all of white's potential territory on the left. Watch how white just continues and takes uh, the right side, uh, the bottom side. Um, this is a common uh, shape, uh, the double honey. Um, Uh, well, let, uh, something happened with the SGF. Let's reload. Well, welcome back. Um, so we left off uh, right here. Um, this double honey is a very uh, common uh, shape. Um, this is one of the things you can memorize, uh, but know how to use it. If black cuts, he will run into this double Atari and uh, lose the two um, important stones. Uh, next, he has to live in the corner. Um, and um, uh, white is better in this case captured something that's very important for black. Anyway, so black lives in the corner. And uh, with this white move, um, white has shifted the uh, his mojo, his potential territory, to the bottom side. Uh, now, um, black can invade the bottom, but because uh, of what happened earlier, Black's uh, he has to take care of his uh, left side group first. Uh, well, you never have to do anything, but uh, Black feels like he wants to. Uh, I'm sure a lot of us also wants to uh, take care of the left side. It looks uh, very dangerous. So Black pushes and cuts, and then he connects. White turns. Now, uh, with this series of exchanges, Black has um, you know, strengthened his group somewhat. Um, next move, you can see Black's nature comes through. Uh, this, this is a very aggressive move. He is trying to attack the top white group. Um, and if white answers something like this and tries to live on the top, uh, then Black can play something like here, like this. Um, you know, some peep, and then connect himself, uh, um, connect himself, um, sort of uh, takes care of himself, and then he can play on the bottom where White's last remaining potential is. So 
in the game, White played another very good move he played here, attacking this black uh, group first. Now, um, here is the important part. Uh, it's not whether the top group is alive or not, not whether this group is alive or not, but the focus of the game is on the bottom. The bottom white mojo is very, very large. It has a lot of potential territory. And um, um, by attacking this uh, black group on the left side, he is able to, uh, well, uh, let's just uh, see what happens. Look, um, black spends another move trying to capture the top. No. Uh, this, here's another crucial point in this game. Um, in this middle game, uh, black has a weak group, white has a almost dead group. Um, so now white first elects to try to, uh, to live with that group. Here, now white makes a very big reading mistake. Um, in this case, white can um, live by Ko if he plays here. And then throw in this Ko using, um, using these cutting points and stuff as, uh, as a Ko thread. He can probably live and um, um, he can probably live. Uh, but in the game, um, white blocks and black plays here. I'll show you what happens. And uh, this top white group has died without Ko. Can't see. Even if white uh, Atari's, he only has one eye. So in this case, white has made a huge mistake. He's, uh, his group was supposed to live in Ko, but he has died. Um, um, so Black's feeding frenzy continues, and uh, he captures another group. Um, unfortunately, even after Black captures this group, he is not winning. Um, and that's because of everything we talked about earlier. Well, White's potential territory on the bottom is absolutely huge. Um, and given that uh, Black has a relatively weak group on the left side, and white has sente at this point, uh, white can make the first attack on the left side. And oh, let's just see how white does. White plays here, he seals black in, and um, black tries to live, but the important thing is this entire bottom side. Uh, we don't know how much that is it probably is enough to overcome whatever white lost on the top. And indeed, it, it, it does. Um, and what black has to live with his own group right now. So um, that's why uh, this, uh, this white play in this game is very beautiful. Although I am not convinced that this is his plan because um, you know he messed up on the top. Um, I don't think he plans as much. It's just a natural course of um, of playing the game. Um, anyway, uh, here, if white continues by playing this uh, this move to attack black, black has this nice uh, suji to capture white um, stones. Um, white can't allow this, of course. White has to fix his own shape. And so black has captured another two uh, white stones. Um, white plays here. Now black has lived in Sente. So in this fight again, uh, white was attacking black, but black has lived and got Sente to invade white. So another successful uh, battle here. So uh, from the beginning, black has gone on to capture many, many white stones, another white group, and made his own group alive in Sente. Despite all this, these achievements, because of what we talked about earlier, the focus being the bottom white mojo, 
which is pretty much solid territory now, uh, black is still way, way behind. White plays another very simple continuation. Now, black may or may not be able to live if white um, decides to play the most aggressive response, which is protecting the corner. Um, but white didn't do that, so. And I will just take you guys through a couple more moves. And uh, here we have it. Um, in almost every uh, fight in this game, black has come out ahead. Um, he captured the white without Ko. He has lived in Sente. He has successfully invaded the bottom white corner. Made this. He made ten points in the white corner. It's it's a tremendous success. Uh, but unfortunately, because white's um, overall strategic, um, uh, the the overall white strategy was very sound. Uh, all this muscle that black used. Uh, was to no avail. Um, and the end game uh, is very quick. Um, we can just uh, skip to the end. Um, by the way, Black also uh, made a few points in the end game as well. And the result of this game is that uh, White has won by five and a half points. Um, as you can tell by the number of um, captured pieces, um, and uh, pieces left to be captured. White has lost way more stones than his opponent. Uh, black has captured way more than white, uh, but because of white's massive potential on the bottom middle, um, white was able to win. Um, now, this game was very illustrative because there's two very contrasting styles. Um, let's just go back to here. Now, the theme, one player seems to have strengths, but he tunnel visions on stone capture and saving his own stones. Um, as a result, um, uh, he lost the game, even though he seems to have been uh, much, much stronger. Um, he won all the fights, and um, he captured way more of his opponent's stones. Um, so um, this brings us back to the conclusion. Um, in Go, uh, muscle is very important, the reading ability, the judging ability, uh, but skill is also important because that is strategy. Um, strategy is also very important and it doesn't take a lot of training to amass. That's why uh, you should watch me, I will teach you some strategy and uh, then you can outsmart your opponents in the Go board. Um, Later on, I will teach you how to be lazy uh, and still win. Uh, but uh, all jokes aside, um, the, I want to leave you guys with this uh, one last thought, and that is muscle has a certain skill all its own. So once you get skilled enough or strong enough at reading, it can seem as if um, all this planning, all this strategizing, uh, they could all not work. Um, they could all be, you know, pushing up against a, a brick wall. Um, if you have enough muscle, you it's like you have skill. But the other way is not a, is is not true. Uh, if you have a lot of strategy but you have no muscle, that means you can't execute any of the uh, any of the any of your uh, grand visions or your grand plans. Um, and so um, if you watch uh, some of my episodes, we can teach you these shortcuts using strategy to overcome uh, very strong muscle, uh, but, it's, um, but it's still very important to get muscle like this, like this shark right here. OK? Um, Yes, I will conclude with this. Um, uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, please uh, leave any comments to um, uh, to uh, you know. Perhaps you would like me to look at certain other types of games, uh, maybe different skill levels. Uh, uh, 
um, you know, any uh, any any comments is welcome. Uh, let's just uh, take a look at how this game ended. Um, a very beautiful game. Um, uh, anyway, this is Michael Chen signing out. Uh, tune back in uh, next time. Thank you.